Water is the issue for the century. You have to have water to live. Most of the water on the globe is not readily accessible to us as trapped in deep glaciers or deep underground. And of course, what is available is the ocean. My name is Amanda Brock, and I'm CEO of a company called Water Standard Company, which is in the desalination business. Desalination is the process by which you remove salts from seawater or brackish water and you produce drinking quality water. Water Standard has taken this technology that is usually associated with the plant on the shore and taken it to a vessel. It's added its own power source and it is mobile. We're in the final design phase. 18 months from now, we expect to be producing and delivering drinking water to land. If we are able to create a ready supply of drinking water and move that around the globe to where people live who don't have access to water, I mean, what better solution could there be? Human population has exploded. And all of that population growth means we take a huge amount of the planet's resources. We are pumping out aquifers at a massive rate, draining rivers so they don't even reach the ocean. There's a communications revolution, there's an internet revolution, there's an information revolution, and yet there are a billion people on the planet that don't have access to safe drinking water. Cities are coming up short, cities that were never short of water before. Places like Atlanta and the whole southeast region are in an extended drought. We're going to see growing conflicts over water, increasing water-related diseases, increasing scarcity, increasing contamination. We are facing a crisis of monumental proportions. The way I think about water is really at a very elemental level. I grew up in Africa and I grew up on a ranch. When you see the impact of drought and the exacerbating effect on poverty, it just leaves an indelible mark and you know that things have to be different. Water Standard is a unique company in that it's focused on mass desalination on a vessel and it has the ability to move from place to place. An emergency, a, another Katrina, a um, drought. Let's look at this simply. You have a pipe bringing seawater up into the ship. You separate the salts from the water, and then the water goes into a pipeline where it will be delivered to shore. There are thousands of desalination plants already in operation. The vast majority are in the Middle East, where historically water has been very scarce and where energy has been cheap. The challenge is desalination is expensive compared to alternatives. And it's expensive because it takes a lot of energy to strip salt out of fresh water. You have to push water through micro screens that are the size of atoms. The result is highly concentrated salt that can change the nature of the ecosystem that that salt gets dumped back in. Right now, desalination seems trivial compared to how big the oceans are. But, you know, we thought burning fossil fuels was trivial too. In theory, we could desalinate a tremendous amount of water from the oceans. In practice, we need to make sure that we do it carefully and in an economically acceptable way. The biggest question that everybody's got is what happens to the whole process when we put it on a ship with vibration, with movement. Ben Moverhead is a wonderful engineer. He has experience in the environments we are going to be in. He has dedicated his life to desalination in many respects. This is the membrane. That's correct. This is the barrier against salt. Okay. This is what does the desalination for us. There are two types of desalination technologies. The old process was the thermal process. In a thermal process, you evaporate the water, take the condensate, make it into a drinking water. What we are using on the vessel is reverse osmosis, which is a more modern way of desalinating. We apply pressure to a membrane to desalinate the water and make purified water. So we brought two samples from the process floor. This is the permeate or the finished water out of desal. 
Right. And this is the concentrate or so-called the waste that goes to James River from this facility. The issue of concentrate in the desalination industry has been very controversial and a lot of studies have been done on the impact that concentrate has on the marine environment wherever it has been discharged. Our system is very simple. We are sitting on the biggest dilution pond there is, the ocean. We're able to bring in more seawater, dilute the concentrate to an acceptable level so that the concentrate goes out and really has no impact to the surrounding ocean. So we're looking at putting our, our turbines or our diesel systems on deck. One of the big challenges of desalination has always been power usage. We believe in having our own power source on board where we can use multi-fuels, biodiesel if it's available, wind power. And if you look at the equivalent on land, they're pulling it off a grid. You've got transmission lines, you've got line loss. We just are much more efficient in the way in which we approach the, the power conundrum. This afternoon, going to meet with Mike Robinson, who is very familiar with the marine application that we are looking at. We're going to get into a helicopter, and we're going to fly over the port of Houston, and we're going to be looking at some vessels from the air, and he's going to educate me on the types of ships we could possibly use. That's a bus carrier. Because if you see there, it just goes straight down to the bottom of the hull. Exactly to get a vessel of the quality we need, we will be looking in the $20 million range. Mike, look at the red vessel over there. This is a oil tanker. It has the right uh, dimensions, it has the right size, and also at the right price. Although it's expensive to build one of these vessels, when you look at how much you can produce, how long you can produce, the unit cost of water is actually very affordable. had a wonderful opportunity today to come on to a Navy cargo carrier to look at a vessel and really visually see how we're able to bring our factories and our equipment and processes onto decks like this. Wow. USNS Benavides is operated by the Military Sealift Command. This is a large medium speed roll-on roll-off vessel. It's capable of taking all rolling stock. Anything that they would want to carry for the military can be carried on the ship. And how much storage capacity do you have, we have on board? We have, put in relative terms, approximately seven football fields worth of deck space that can carry cargo. It's just amazing to be on a vessel. It's amazing to see all this open deck. And when you go below and you see that massive cargo hold, and all I can see is moving in my RO systems and moving in the power plant and, and making it happen. It, it really is just a wonderful feeling. I think the idea of mass desalination on a vessel is an idea whose time has come. There is so much need for temporary facilities. The concept of putting desalination on something that moves uh, is amazing. Water Standard has a real possibility of making a positive impact in a way that's good for people, it's good for human growth, and it's good for the environment. <laughs>